In 2022, Ross Chastain cemented his place in NASCAR history with what was considered a video game move in the Hail Melon. But that was not the first time in NASCAR's history that this happened. Nearly 15 years prior, another would add to his eventual legacy with the video game move, Carl Edwards. Edwards had stormed onto the cup scene in 2004, and by 2005, he was part of some majorly iconic moments. His side-by-side -side run to the finish at Atlanta over Jimmy Johnson still gets replayed almost 20 years after the fact. By 2008, he was normally expected to be a championship contender in his number 99 Roush Fenway Ford. Though, it'd be tough with two-time defending champion Jimmy Johnson and teammate Greg Bitbull being only 10 points behind. And with the 48 starting on pole and Carl rolling off 34th, it was gonna be a tough grind. Add to that a Kansas track that showed out in literal chaos the two years before, with Tony Stewart not even knowing he won the 2006 race and most of the chasers being taken out in 2007. So the 2008 edition of the race was bound to be really good. Number three in the 2008 chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. And here they come to the green flag. Green, green, green. They are going to black flag the 07. This car, Clint Boyer, for passing before the start, and that, uh, that's huge. That's going to put him in a huge hole because he's going to have to come down pit road at pit road speed. He's going to lose close to a lap, if not going a lap down by doing that. Not the way that Clint Boyer wanted to start here at uh, his home racetrack. Man, look at this. Look at this 83 car. You get past the start finish line left or right. You can pass, pass on the outside. Pass through outside. Yeah, the problem is if everybody else knows that, as he's slowing down, it's a tough pit road to get on, and he had a lot of guys behind him. Let's show you what happened on the start here. Here's Clint Boyer. While Johnson won out early, it would be Matt Kenseth and his number 17 car running away with the lead on lap 17 of all laps. Meanwhile, Edwards was carving his way through the field. Before even lap 30, he was up to 17th. Getting further into the run, handling was starting to present itself as an issue for everybody out there. And the lead at this time changed hands again, as DEI's Martin Truex Jr. took the lead from Kenseth with both approaching the ailing M&M's machine. Bush's 2008 season was a true Jekyll and Hyde. It was very similar to Edwards leading up to it with a ton of wins, eight between races four and 22. But in the chase is where they diverged as there was a pure implosion from the 18. A crash and blown engine put him in the basement and eventually a 28th in this run officially ended his championship hopes. Meanwhile, the actual contenders of the day were having their first green flag pit stops. Problems would immediately present themselves. Casey Mears in in the five car. Trouble on pit road, the 99 trying to get out of his pits behind Ryan Vickers. Get to the grass here, get to the grass, let's go. Hey, dig hard, watch your blend line here, watch your blend line. Luckily, there wasn't any major damage and Edwards could continue on. And with a timely caution, the 99 crew could repair both that damage and any more that was sustained after contact with Jeff Burton and Dave Blaney on pit road on that set of pit stops. So, only 80 or so laps into the race, and Edwards already had to run back up through the pack. Meanwhile, up front, Jimmy Johnson was finally asserting himself as the dominant guy of the day. By fighting for and eventually gaining the lead, after a caution and duel with teammate Casey Mears. While there were some incidents before, lap 124 would offer the first of two chaser incidents on the day. Oh, trouble. Whoa, trouble in turn two. Get your hand up, get your hand up. Kansas sideways right in front of Mears and Edwards. This is probably going to work out okay for Matt. I thought he might slide up in front of these guys, but uh, he gets real lucky. Well, what a job he did to keep the car down. Uh, off and hold Jimmy Johnson off to this point. I don't know how much longer he's going to be able to do that, but I think that it really shut up and spin. 
Tony Stewart down through the grass here on the front stretch. Another one of caution. our chasers having issues. That splitter makes a nice little mower up front there. While Kenseth recovered, Stewart would not. And being the lowest finishing chaser of the day, it really hurt his championship fight. Just past halfway, Edwards was already challenging for a top five spot after having to go all the way to the back because of those pit issues. He and the 48 were on a collision course for the finish or at least for the lead because with around 100 laps left, they were 1-2 on the racetrack. This also meant they were 1-2 in the point standings for the championship and just over 92 to go was when they met. As far as other cars getting into him, he's been at the back of the pack a number of times, and here he is battling to take the lead away from Jimmy Johnson. Edwards has not led a single lap today. Remember, he came in as the... Anywhere near you, you're right on his cage. Edwards came in as the points leader, and now is being shown some 15 points behind Jimmy Johnson, but now he will retake the lead or try to take the lead. Johnson thus far has led the most laps three times for 67 total laps. And Carl decided to go to the high side to try to make this pass and does make it now as he assumes the lead. The lead would be short-lived as green flag stops would begin again and they would swap spots again. Though Edwards once again would nab the lead from Jimmy Johnson, but after another 30 laps or so, the 99 had pulled away from the field. But Edward's car was, in his words, starting to fall off and not as good as it was before his green flag stop. Luckily for him, though, with 50 to go, a caution would come out offering he and the field a pit stop lifeline or a race changing pass. Just right because he's in his stall, he's got it aimed at a little bit. 84 got in. And, yeah, uh, he got out clean. But it was just enough that Carl had to turn those wheels and couldn't give it going straight out. And that's what allowed Jimmy Johnson to beat him out of the pits. Now, while these two did run off with the lead in second on the restart, there would be another restart via a Michael Waldrop crash. So with 38 to go, the field would line up for the final time they would restart for the day. And once again, it would be the 48 and 99 running off with it. While Edward's car would get better as the run went on, Jimmy's was stronger in the opening half of the run and in clean air. Coming down to the finish, the lead was never really much more than a second. Edwards would try different lines, trying to keep his nose in clean air, while Jimmy would try and navigate his way through lap traffic. But with eight to go, the 99 was finally starting to hook up. He was visibly catching Johnson. Coming to five to go, he was in lap traffic, that being Jimmy Johnson, Edwards coming up right behind him. But that lap traffic would hurt Edwards, so he'd fall back. With two laps left, the finish was setting up, though, as the 99 found something up top. And, as many will say, welcome to a moment in history. Carl getting there, there now, two to go. Wow, made a big game right there. That's huge. He might have found something when he got forced to that high side there a while ago. He did find something. He was four tenths of a second faster than Jimmy Johnson that last lap. And you can see Jimmy Johnson take that away from him right there. Wow. He's got a fight on his hands right, here this right, last lap. Yes, we do. White flag. Get you some, bud. Let's go get it now. That was big right there. Jimmy Johnson took that away. Carl Edwards is going to get to the outside of him and have a chance to make the pass. Still, still might, might right get here. him right here. Here he comes, digging up off the corner. Turn two, half a lap away from the checkered flag. And what's Jimmy Johnson do here? He goes to that high side. Carl Edwards is going to go to the bottom. There we go. <laughs> oh, Carl, oh, right by oh, him. Hit it the car stick. Here oh. comes Jimmy Johnson. He's in the wall. He's in the wall. Can here he comes get it Jimmy. Off the wall. We're back inside now. Oh, wow. Carl Edwards trying to hang on. Here comes Jimmy Johnson down, and Johnson will take the win. In a last gasp, Edwards tried a bonsai move on Johnson, and Edwards' reasoning gave gamers nationwide a reason to cheer. And Carl Edwards breaking things down with spotter Jason Hedleski. He also broke things down a little bit with Jimmy Johnson moments ago. Carl, what did you want to discuss with him? <laughs> I just wondered how far I cleared him by. <laughs> I, I plan on hitting the wall, but I didn't plan on the wall slowing me down that much. Played a lot of video games where you can just run it in the wall and hold it wide open. And that's what I did, but it didn't work out quite the same as a video game. I just really, really wanted to win this race, so um, 
I feel bad for uh, the guys back in the shop for tearing up their race car um, intentionally, but I wasn't going to get by them on the top, and I didn't want to go in there and slide job and hit them, and uh, so I just did what uh, what I could do. But I just can't thank uh, Office Depot enough, Ford, Athlac, all the fans here. I want to win this race more than any race on the schedule, and I guess I'll have to wait another year. And it seemed like uh, bouncing off things was kind of the theme of your day, wasn't it? Yes, we, uh, we people had, bouncing off you. And we had an up and down day, mostly down in the pits, but uh, up on the racetrack. The guys did a great job, and the, the pit stops came around. Um, They're actually pretty good. We just kept uh, running into things, but um, man, that's uh, that's as hard as I could go there at the end. And uh, I wish I could have won that race, but Jimmy's a smart racer. I, I've done that to guys too, and they slide job. You just lift and go right back by and watch them, you know. And uh, I just didn't know what was going to happen. I figured I had to try. Leaving Kansas, Johnson led Edwards by a mere 10 points, a lead that would be blown up on the 99's end over the next two races. First, by being involved in a major big one wreck at Talladega, and then at Charlotte, having issues and ending up running 33rd on the night, being 168 points behind the 48 car with only five races remaining in the season. Johnson would be relentless, winning at Martinsville and Phoenix, basically canceling out the wins that Edwards would have at the end of the season. While Edwards won the battle at Homestead for the win, Johnson won the war for the third straight year, this time by 69 nice points over the 99 car. But for just about three seconds on the final lap of Kansas, it looked as though Carl Edwards would slay the monster Jimmy Johnson in the most dramatic way possible. But with that, I want to pass this all on to you. What inexplicable NASCAR moments sent your head spinning? Let me know down in the comments below. All right, leave a like in this video, share this video, and especially subscribe to this channel for more great NASCAR content. A huge thank you has to go to my channel members for continued support. And if any of y'all are going to be at Kansas this weekend, be sure to say hi. It'll be fun. So until then, have a good one.